This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. With the Hall of Fame game coming up tomorrow, today is officially the final day of the NFL all season without games. That feels tremendously weird to say. We're going to break down the Hall of Fame game tomorrow, talking some bets that I like at FanDuel Sportsbook for that. But for today, we're going to begin a series we'll be rolling out the next couple of weeks, breaking down NFL futures that I like at FanDuel Sportsbook. We've already discussed week one bets and the top win totals for me over at FanDuel Sportsbook. In previous shows, not going to go back through those. We want to talk through player futures, Super Bowl futures, and more. And today we're going to start things off by talking my top divisional bets for 2024. We'll go division by division, outline my thoughts on that division and whether or not I see value enough to take it at FanDuel Sportsbook for that division. So that's on tap for today, breaking down my top divisional bets for 2024. Welcome on into Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research here to break down my top NFL divisional bets for 2024 and where I see value based on the current odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll dive into all that here in just one second, but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast again tomorrow and NFL Hall of Fame game preview, breaking down my top bets at FanDuel Sportsbook for Texans versus Bears to get that in all of our shows as they are posted. Make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. And also, don't forget this show is available on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch or log in with your FanDuel account on the FanDuel TV Plus app, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Roku devices. The dog days are here, and the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sports. But because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts, snipe bonus bets for home runs every Tuesday, even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball, must be 18 plus in D.C. and 21 plus in present and select states. Opt-in required. Wager requirements apply. Bonuses awarded as non withdrawable bonus bets or profit boost tokens. Restrictions apply, including bonus expiration. See terms and conditions at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or visit FanDuel.com slash RG, Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat, Connecticut, 1-800-9 within Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 for KSGamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit MD Gambling Health at Oregon, Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's pull up now the divisional odds at FanDuel Sportsbook and go division by division, just going based on the order they're in in the scroll here at FanDuel Sportsbook. First one is the AFC East. Not seeing anything I want to act upon here. I've got the Bills with the top win total projection for me, but the Dolphins, close enough. The Jets, I've already got exposure to them via their under win total for the year. So I don't want to add here. I've had most interest in the Bills, but not enough to bet them. Plus 165 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I do see value, though, in the AFC South, specifically with the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are currently plus 270 to win the AFC South at FanDuel Sportsbook. And this is not a bet against C.J. Stroud, who I adore. He is awesome. High on him coming out of the draft. And I bet the Texans to win a bunch last year. So they're a very good team and a team I like a lot. But there are some circumstances outside of C.J. Stroud's control that lead me to being on the Jags at these specific odds. The big thing is honestly the schedule, because if I take my power rankings for each team, I can get an expected win total for each team based on the power ranking. And if I compare that to their actual win total projection, it tells me how tough their schedule is. Basically, how much 
does their actual win total projection deviate from what's expected based on their power rankings inside my model? And the Texans lose 0.6 wins based on the schedule they face as being the AFC South winner last year. Tougher schedule for them facing a lot more divisional winners from last year. The Jags actually get bumped up 0.2 wins from expectations. So the Texans are minus 0.6. Jags are plus 0.2. So that's a swing of 0.8 wins. So even though the Texans are higher in my power ratings, the Jags actually have a higher win total projection for me in large part due to the schedule they, they will face. So that's part one of why I'm on the Jags to win this year. But I'm also a bit wary of the Texans' defense. They're not going to have Danico Autry for the first six games. He's got a suspension coming up. He slid back a bit last year, but it's still a high-impact position, and you don't want to lose guys there for six day, six weeks. The secondary should be better if Derek Stingley Jr. can be healthy, but I'm just not fully sold yet on that side of the football. So some wariness around the Texans' schedule and their defense. But I also want to buy Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is a good football player. He didn't play like it last year. But he is that. He was banged up last year, a lot of weird circumstances breaking against them. And I think that we should have high expectations for Lawrence heading into this year. Now, the pass catchers are not going to be as good as they were previously. No Calvin Ridley being there does matter. But in Trevor Lawrence, they have a quarterback who can play well despite not having the best receivers. Calvin Ridley was not there in 2022, and Lawrence finished seventh in MVP voting for that year. So you give him Gabe Davis, Brian Thomas Jr. Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, I think he can be somewhat okay, despite the fact the pass catches there are not elite. So I love the Texans, want to be high on them, have interest in the Colts, don't think the Titans are totally dead in this division, but I think the Jags are a good value, a plus 270 to win the AFC South due to the factors kind of working against the Texans and working slightly in favor of the Jags here. So first divisional bet for me is the Jags, plus 270 to win AFC South. Next division up is the AFC North. Uh, Ravens lean the way plus 145. I think that's fair. I have them first in win total projections, followed by the Bengals. 0.8 wins between those two teams. Uh, Ravens 11.5 and the Bengals 10.7. So maybe you could consider betting one of those two teams. I think the Browns are a bit overvalued as of right now. Not super high in the Steelers. You could potentially justify taking a swing at the Ravens or Bengals. Personally, I don't want to pick, so I'm going to pass on the AFC North. AFC West, it's the Chiefs. I don't need feel the need to go super hard there. I don't want to lay minus 230 on them to win it um, because injuries can occur and things like that, but I'm not betting the AFC South, so stay away from me. So the lone AFC bet I want to make is going to be on the Jags at plus 270. The second spot where I see value in the NFL divisional markets is in the NFC East. And that is on the Dallas Cowboys to win the NFC East at plus 165. Right now, the Eagles are minus 125 as the favorites. And I think that's a bit of an overreaction to what the Cowboys have lost this year. They definitely did lose a lot of key pieces, most of which went to Washington, it seems like. And that's going to be an issue. Tyron Smith is gone as well. So you could have concerns around this offensive line, but they still have Tyler Smith. They still have Zach Martin. They got a quarterback in Dak Prescott who can navigate away around, I think, based on his pocket presence, a maybe not perfect offensive line. And I still think this is an okay offensive line based on those pieces, based on some of the guys they brought in to try to replace the players who are departing. So the offensive line, I still think can be above average or at least average at worst, even though they've lost some key pieces. And a pass catcher, their lone loss is Michael Gallup, who has since retired, and I don't think that's a huge loss. Jalen Tolbert was mixing in with them even when Gallup was still there, so I think we're kind of overreacting to losses for Dallas. I don't think they were actually as bad as perception may be. The Cowboys do still have, looking at the guys who are currently on that roster, High-impact players at high-impact positions. Dak Prescott at quarterback, CeeDee Lamb at wide receiver, Micah Parsons as an edge defender. If you have got superstars, or at least stars, in the case of Prescott at all three of those positions, you're going to be in contention to win not just the division, but also the Super Bowl. I don't know if I want to get there at the Cowboys necessarily. I might talk myself into that, but... Plus 165 to win the division is not that bad because I don't think the losses the Cowboys encountered are quite as bad as the perception of them has been in the betting markets this year. As far as the Eagles side of this equation, I need to see the defense improve. 
and they could do so because they got, they've got Vic Fangio, maybe Jalen Carter steps up in year two. With the Cowboys, I don't need to see improvement. I just need to see sustaining them sustaining what they've done in the past couple of years. So it's less of a projection with the Cowboys than it is with the Eagles. I need the Cowboys, the Eagles to take a step forward, whereas I don't need that out of Dallas. So I've got the Cowboys as the, the highest win total in this division. They're actually pretty high for me overall. Maybe I will wind up talking myself into a Super Bowl future, but plus 165 to win the division to me, a really good value. Happy to go there and feel good about the Cowboys in this market. So Cowboys to win the a NFC East plus 165, second bet for me. The third one is one we've discussed plenty on the show here. Don't need to belabor it too much, but um, it's the Saints. Uh, for those of you who have not been listening throughout the offseason, I'm pretty high in the Saints this year. It's not necessarily like fading the Falcons. It's partly that, but I've actually got the Falcons pretty in line with their win total. I have them at 9.6 wins. They're at 9.5. That's below market for me, actually, once you consider uh, the juice on the over. So I'm slightly below market on them, but I kind of just think that the Saints are underrated overall. Like, yeah, Derek Carr gives you a low ceiling as a quarterback, and Dennis Allen already on the hot seat. Don't necessarily want to buy into a team with the vibes like this, but Dennis Allen is a good defensive coach. They, the Saints have been a top 10 scoring defense under Allen in four consecutive years. That's a pretty good track record. So he can have his flaws as a head coach, but he's led good defenses. And they still have Marshawn Lattimore. So I don't have like high, high, high expectations of the defense, but I think they'll be a good unit. And I think that could be enough in the NFC South. Also on offense, it's a new system for the Saints this year. I'm not a huge Clint Kubiak guy. I thought his time in Minnesota was pretty underwhelming, but he's had some time since then to hopefully grow, evolve, and try to become a better offense coordinator. But I think the big thing here is it's something new. That, that scheme for the Saints last year was not good. And when you look at the skill guys they've got, they should be able to move the football. The offensive line is going to be a big pain point here. And I think that's my biggest concern with betting the Saints at all this year is because... They've got concerns along the offensive line. They're going to rely on uh, an underwhelming rookie from last year, a right tackle, and a rookie this year, a left tackle. That's going to be a red flag for sure, especially for Derek Carr, who is not a guy who elevates uh, bad offensive lines. But it's also not as if I have super high expectations for this team. The Saints are 14th in my power rankings, and that's not super high, but it's high enough to be tops in this division. So maybe the Falcons make take a massive lead for maybe Kirk Cousins fully healthy can utilize Kyle Pitts, Drake London, Bijan Robinson, and that could happen. But I think we've been a bit too quick to dismiss the Saints. And plus three eighty to me is a very long number. So we've talked a lot about them this year. We're going to keep on talking about them. Probably, I would not be shocked if I am there in Week One as well. But uh, the Saints to me, the, one of the better divisional bets for this year at plus three eighty. Next division up is the NFC North. The Lions plus 140 to win, followed by the Packers a two to one, and the Bears a three to one. I want to go towards the Packers in this division, NFC North a two to one. And that's not anti Detroit. I actually have Detroit as the top team in the NFC North. I have them projected a 10.5 win, so I am in line with bookmakers on the Lions. But I have the Packers at 10.1 win, so actually a bit above market on them. And then I'm below market on both the Bears and the Vikings. So that the the Bears and the Vikings side of things is what creates the value here on Green Bay not being low on Detroit. And there are a lot of key pieces that make me like the Packers. Jordan Love is a pretty obvious one. You could say it's a one-year blip, but a lot of what he did seems pretty sustainable. Film people love Jordan Love. I like Jordan Love as a data guy. So if we're both aligned, which doesn't happen all that often, probably means the guy's good at football. And he did that with crazy young skill players at wide receiver. So you get another year with Christian Watson, hopefully healthy. Romeo Dobbs taking a step forward if he can. Jaden Reed in year two, Dentavian Wicks. That's a pretty good core of guys to work with, with the potential for them to take a step forward again this year. I'm also kind of curious what the defense will look like under a new DC for the Packers. They've had talent on that side of the ball previously, but haven't been able to put it all together. I'm still expecting this defense to be below average, and I think they'll be worse in Detroit's defense. So that's that's worth noting as a baseline. But there is upside for both the Packers' offense and defense to be really, really good this year should things break their way. So this is not a Detroit fade. 
It's more so buying into Green Bay while being lower than market on the Bears and the Vikings. Two to one, not a massive value on the Packers, but it's big enough for me to bite there. So the Packers, two to one, another divisional uh, future for me. NSC West, similar to the ASC West, no interest in betting here. I think that the, pa- the, the 49ers might actually be a value of minus 190 because I've got them pretty well clear of the pack. I have them really high, uh, 12.9 wins, which might be too high. It's above market. Uh, but then the Rams are second at 9.2 wins. So big gap between them and the, the market uh, between them and the rest of the division. Maybe they are value at minus 190, but I'd rather find other ways to bet the Niners if I think that is the case. So Divisional futures I like entering 2024. The Packers, two to one to win the NFC North. The Saints, plus 380 to win the NFC South. Got the Cowboys, plus 165 to win the NFC East. And the Jags, plus 270 to win the AFC South. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread for the final show of the official NFL offseason. But tomorrow, we are back with you once again, breaking down the Hall of Fame game between the Texans and the Bears, talking about some bets I like at FanDuel Sports. But for that one, to get those that show and all of our shows as they go live, make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can also, again, find the show over on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. If you got any questions for me, I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets uh, if you're making any across this Wednesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for the first game of the NFL season. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. 